Okay, so let's just, I'll just say it. The iPhone XR is the best iPhone you can buy today, and it will likely be the best iPhone you can buy next year, whatever the R model is, and the year after that, etc., etc. This video is sponsored by Declutter. I've done a couple of mea culpas in my time about the iPhone XR, following on the heels of some negative thoughts that I had about the iPhone XR before its release. Before its release, I just couldn't see how a phone with lesser specs than the big boy iPhones, particularly when it came to the screen and you know the, 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 the camera, I couldn't see how the iPhone XR could compete. But in the eight or so months since the iPhone XR has been released, something strange has happened. It's become Apple's best-selling iPhone. At the time, there was some boisterous discussion going on between myself and a few other YouTube creators out there about how well the iPhone XR would sell if it sold at all. I was convinced it wouldn't. I said it many, many times. The way the phone was shaping up, I just saw it as a half-hearted attempt by Apple to plug a hole in their product line by making a dumbed-down version of the 2018 iPhones in, you know, with some colors and a potato screen. The screen turned out to be not that bad, and as I said, I was wrong. The iPhone XR is everything the more expensive versions are in a slightly dressed down package. Let's say that it's the sweatpants of iPhones, whereas the XS and XS Max are more the tucks and tails. Even the single lens camera has turned out to be a really good camera, even though it lacks some of the bells and whistles and features of the big boy cameras. It's only got that one lens, the other one has two, but still, very good. Some have said, because it's selling so well, the iPhone XR is actually the flagship iPhone at this moment. And it will be until one of the higher price models can actually outsell it. The iPhone XR is a hit. No denying it. I was wrong. Someone baked me a crow pot pie. Send it over. I'll eat it. But is the iPhone XR the best iPhone? You can look at that question and answer it in a bunch of different ways. First off, it's the cheapest iPhone that you can buy that's a new model starting at 749 for 64 gigabytes. That may be the biggest factor for a lot of people when they're choosing which iPhone to get. The iPhone XS and XS Max are hundreds of dollars more expensive just to start out. Are they objectively nicer, even better phones? Yes, they have noticeably better screens, the colors pop, all those things that YouTubers say. They are built with nicer materials, and some may prefer the more understated color options of those phones. The iPhone XS Max's screen is bigger, but you get the idea. They are premium phones, and they have the premium price tag to go along with it, and that's not going to change anytime soon. Making the iPhone R series even more of a great value. And speaking of great value, let me tell you a little bit about today's sponsor. The Declutter store has six million happy customers worldwide. Every tech product sold at Declutter is certified refurbished, which means their expert team has put it through an extensive 70 point refurbishment process to ensure that it's of the highest possible quality. Declutter also offers a free 12 month limited warranty and free tracked shipping. Declutter offers some of the cheapest refurbished devices around. In fact, here is an iPhone 10R that they sent me to check out that's uh, a representative of the products that they sell. I gotta tell you, there is not a single scratch, scuff, anything, yeah, I, it just looks great. This phone on Declutter is going for $648.99, but by using the 10% coupon, PHT10, you can get this phone for $584.09. Full price for the same device on the Sprint network will cost you $749 today. That's hundreds of dollars of savings just by going through Declutter. Click the link to go over to Declutter and check out this phone or any of the other phones they have on offer. They give you a 12 month warranty as well as a 70 point refurbishment checklist. And don't forget, use the code PHT10 at checkout for 10% off of your purchase. We're already getting glimpses into what the iPhone 11 and whatever the next iPhone in 2020 is going to be called, what it will look like, how they will probably be priced. The iPhone 11 and 11 Max are going to sport that fugly, bug-eyed camera square thingy that seems to be reviled by everyone. 
iPhones have always been about minimalistic, elegant design, and a big old wart on the back of the phone with three eyes is not all that elegant any way you slice it. Most of the reaction that I've encountered on the uh, on the interwebs about the design of the new iPhones um, is like, ew. Eh. There seems to be no one on the internet who's getting super excited about the upcoming iPhone 11 models, but that's going to change as the release date gets closer. But I feel like in other gears, the internet right now would be a buzz with fire and vitriol fighting over leaks and rumors. But this year, not so much. The 2020 iPhone is going to play with screen sizes a little bit on the on the two main phones, and it's likely going to be the first iPhone with 5G capability, which for most of the folks out there will just mean that the phones will be more expensive still for a feature that not many people can use. We aren't going to see 5G capability become widespread enough over the next few years to make buying a 5G phone make sense for the majority of people. What does this have to do with the iPhone XR, you might be asking, because I've gone off on a tangent. In a world where phones keep getting more and more expensive and the improvements made to those phones are only incremental as opposed to the kind of leaps and bounds improvements that we saw maybe five or ten years ago, more and more people are likely going to turn to the phone that gives them the most value. In fact, a recent article in Cult of Mac reports that people are keeping their iPhones for longer and longer now, which makes sense because they get more and more expensive. All of this makes the iPhone XR and whatever R versions come later more and more attractive to more and more people. You get the same chip that the big boy phones have. You get the same iOS. You get the same, you get the same wireless charging, face ID access to the vaunted Apple ecosystem. And all you really sacrifice is a little bit of a dip down in screen quality and one extra camera lens, a slightly less premium build materials. Uh, on the plus side, you get a bigger battery that's driving a less power hungry screen. I know from firsthand experience that the iPhone XR has the best battery life of any iPhone I have used ever. The plus size phones, the max phones come close, but in my experience, the 10R is the battery champ and who doesn't want great battery life. So maybe things balance out a little bit. For all intents and purposes, the iPhone 10R is 90% of the more expensive iPhones for hundreds of dollars less. And that will remain true over the next couple of years. In 2020, there's talk that the R version of the iPhone is gonna even get an OLED screen. So that's one negative mark that's gonna be taken off. Like I said, when the iPhone 10R was announced and I saw the spec sheet, I saw nothing but failure. And I have to give the YouTubers who prognosticated differently their due. You were right, I was wrong. See, see how that, I, you were right, I was wrong. But not only was I wrong, to add insult to injury, the iPhone XR has proven that it's not only the cheapest iPhone, but the best-selling iPhone. It looks like when you're selling sweatpants and tuxedos, most people are gonna opt for the sweatpants uh, because, you know, you wear sweatpants more often. I, this metaphor is breaking down, but you know, sweatpants, tuxedo, anyway. I don't know if this was all Apple's plan for the 10R to sort of become their most purchased phone, but that's how it is. So yeah, the iPhone 10R is the best iPhone. The most people are buying it for one thing and for the foreseeable future. From what I can tell, based on what we know about future phones, I don't see any of the bigger ticket iPhones overtaking the 10R anytime soon. But let me know what you think down in the comments. Is the iPhone 10R the best iPhone? Uh, can you justify that statement? Or do you think that even though it's the best selling, maybe it isn't uh, the best? Thank you to Declutter for sponsoring this video. And remember, go to Declutter, get 10% off by using the code PHT10 Thanks so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. If this was your first time here and you want to come on back again, then you can do that by liking, subscribing, bell notifying yourself so that you know when more painfully honest 
tech videos are coming out. And if you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back. I really do appreciate it. Once again, my name's Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest, it hurts. Until the next time, I'm out.